What's up everyone, Aaron Nagler here with Cheesehead TV. It's Friday, it's the afternoon. It's time for your Packers Daily Chat. Uh, not much changed on the Aaron Rodgers front other than um, the fact that Mike McCarthy talked a little bit about it. Aaron Rodgers was seen in the locker room with a sleeve on his left knee. He's walking around seemingly as normal. Um, the Packers are probably gonna hold this as long as they can. Clearly, they don't practice on Friday, so we won't get an official update. They will have to give some kind of approximation. Um, I would, if I had to guess, I would say they'd probably list Rodgers as questionable. Um, but they'll hold this right up until Sunday morning, is my guess, unless there's some breaking reporting on Saturday night. Uh, but it sure would seem like Rodgers is in, is in line to play Sunday against the Vikings, and you can expect a pretty immobile version of him probably staying in the pocket, running a lot of the pistol and shotgun stuff. You saw them run back in 2014 and 2016. Both times he was dealing with leg injuries that rendered him uh, immovable, so to speak. And I don't think there'll be much difference between then and Sunday afternoon. And hello to everybody in the comments. Duncan starts us off with, he's playing. And I tend to agree, Duncan. Uh, trade for Bell. Josh, they're not trading for a running back who wants a monster contract right after they gave Aaron Rodgers the biggest contract in NFL history. It would have made sense to go trade for Mack and sign him, and you have a great player on both sides of the ball, but this is a team that has completely devalued the running back position, and they have the greatest offensive weapon in the league already on a monster contract, eating up a ton of salary cap space. They're not going to trade for a guy and then have to sign him to a monster deal um, that simply isn't going to make that big a difference on the Packers. Now, I know he would be exciting, and he undoubtedly would be a weapon, uh, but not, he would not be worth uh, what he would do to their cap. That's about it. Would the Packers have changed their game plan without his injury during the Bears game? Matthew, that's an excellent question. I tend to think so simply because you know, they were behind a bit, and they were unable to get things moving on the offense. Um, although, maybe if Justin McCray doesn't have those two killer penalties early on, that gives McCarthy a little bit of momentum and he continues down that road. Um, you know, I mean, even before Rodgers got hurt, they had that sweet play to Montgomery for a pretty big gain. They got called back. That would have extended that drive. Who knows, maybe they end up scoring there and then they're off to the races. So, yeah, it's a what it could have shoulda, who knows, but um, Rodgers' injury certainly took them out of a lot of what they wanted to do offensively. Should the Packers bring back Matt Flynn to back up Rodgers? Wow. Man, you know, let's keep it real. They should have signed Teddy Bridgewater or Ryan Fitzpatrick back in the summer. Uh, but they didn't. They traded for Kaiser, and they're all in on developing Kaiser. There's no cavalry coming. There's no move being made here. The Packers are down this road, and that's where they're going to go. Your last, your dream, Mateo utilized your dream last Saturday and met Corey Banky. You were in Green Bay, that's right. Uh, Packer Transplants is greater than everything else in the Packers blogosphere. We thank you for checking it out. Uh, if you haven't, check out the latest Packer Transplants. It's available on our Facebook and or YouTube pages. Um, Corey is still in Green Bay. He stayed there for the week because the Packers open up two weeks in a row at home. So we did a remote. It was a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, Packer Transplants, check it out. Aaron Rodgers almost beat Seattle in the NFC Championship game on one leg. Well, the Packers almost did. He helped lead them. Um, that was not a great game for Aaron. Uh, you know, that early interception to Richard Sherman where he thought he had a guy off sides and it didn't get called. And then a second interception, which was just a really ill-advised pass, um, really didn't go after Richard Sherman when Sherman hurt himself. You know, they obviously did get in position for the tying kick that sent it into overtime. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't, that was not one of Rodgers' great performances. And understandably so, because he was on one leg, but I wouldn't point to that as some shining example of how effective he can be. Um, probably would rather look at something he did, say, against the Cowboys the week before, or even some of the stuff in the regular season uh, after the initial injury, I think it was in Tampa. Will Pete and Ryan be ta taking B.J. Raji questions during their live videos? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, Matthew. That's a good question, though. Um, I'll test it out this weekend. How about that? Will our defense, defensive front feast on Sunday? Matt, 
I don't know about feast, I don't know if that's the word I'd use, but I did touch on that in my preview and prediction post, which literally just went up at Cheesehead TV, so make sure you check that out as soon as we're done here. I do think if there is one spot in this game, one matchup that favors the Packers, you know, completely, it's up front uh, with the Packers defensive line versus the offensive line of the Vikings. And the, the offensive line has been the Achilles heel for Minnesota for quite some time, and early returns from that 49er game certainly suggested that not a lot has changed. Now, I know they're battling injuries at center. Uh, they could, that could change maybe a little bit, but for the most part, uh, they've improved somewhat from uh, the abysmal line they had two years ago. Uh, last year's version was a step up, uh, but it certainly doesn't seem like it's taken a big step forward, and I think the Packers have by far um, the better talent in that matchup. So if there's a place where they can dominate and control the game, it should be there. Uh, up front between the two, the uh, offensive line and defensive line. Defense needs to step up, make some damn plays. Well, while true, I would contend that they kind of did down the stretch there against the Bears. Um, you know, it doesn't help when you have your 10-plus year veteran making stupid roughing the passer penalties and giving the opposition four more downs. Um, but, you know, game on the line, they held them. Not much more you can ask. What can we do to get Jimmy Graham involved? Uh, I think you'll see him get on track this weekend. Uh, the Vikings allowed George Kittle, who is a rookie tight end, they, they let him loose. I mean, they, he was all over the place. He would have had a monster game if he had held on to an 80-yard touchdown pass that was right in his hands. Um, but he got behind and in between the seams and just everywhere against the Vikings. Now, obviously, they're not going to be paying as much attention to George Kittle as they will be against Jimmy Graham. I do think they will focus on Graham somewhat, much like the Bears did, but I do think he'll become Aaron Rodgers' best friend for a good part of this game, uh, especially given his immobility. He's going to want a big target, somebody he can find downfield, and uh, Graham will certainly present that option. Does our secondary make the necessary plays to lock down the wide receivers for the Vikings? You're not going to lock them down. Diggs and Thielen are too good, but I do think those guys have made a living, one or the other, Almost every time the Packers have played the Vikings with those guys across from them at wide receiver, one of those guys has busted out, um, whether it's Thielen or Diggs. One of them has always had a pretty good to great game against the Packers. Now, a lot of that was against talent that's no longer in the building and against a totally different scheme. There is that. So that's you know where your question comes in. Do they have the talent now? I think they do. But I think those guys are super talented, and I don't think you're going to shut them down for an entire game. I think Diggs will still certainly get uh, you know, a bit of production. Uh, I'm not ready to say he's going to eat guys alive, but um, he's a monster. And Thielen's no joke either. So I think if they can hold them to you know, three or four catches each, uh, under 50 yards, 60 yards around that neighborhood, then they're cooking with gas. But you know, the possibility of one or the other going off for 100-plus yards and a touchdown, I'm not going to say it's impossible because it certainly is possible. They are that talented. Score prediction this week. John, check out my preview and prediction post. Just up at cheeseheadtv.com. How do you think the cornerbacks will hold up against Diggs? I can. I just talked about that, but uh, I think he'll get his because he's a very talented wideout, but um, I don't think he's going to feast on the Packers the way he has in the past. I hate saying it. Clay Matthews is best fitted specifically for a Dom Capers-style defense. That's an interesting take, John. Um, I think he's best fitted for the inside, the interior, period. I don't think he's an edge rusher at all anymore. I think he could still be effective inside. I'm interested to see if they uh, maybe make that kind of move and put Reggie Gilbert on the field more. Are there any trade possibilities that can help us with the pass rush? Uh, you know, I know they've, people have suggested uh, Shane Ray and uh, Dante Fowler, but I don't see the Packers making that kind of move. I think this is your squad. As Norman Dale famously said in Hoosiers, this is your team. I don't see a cavalry coming. Uh, Bryce has ordered Sunday's attendees to start drinking early and be loud at Lambeau again. I don't doubt it, man. That crowd on Sunday night was absolutely electric. That was one of the most uh, jazzed, pumped up, what have you. Pick a description. Uh, one of the hottest versions of the Lambeau crowd that you're ever going to get. It was absolutely outstanding. Do I think Adams is better than Diggs? Um, I think they're different receivers. Um, I think Adams, I don't think there's a defensive back in the 
league that can take that can check Adams and man press at the line of scrimmage. I just don't. He's too good. Um, but I do think Diggs uh, is a, a bit more of an explosive athlete. Uh, I think he's got a little more quick twitch to him, and he does a hell of a job getting downfield and winning uh, contested catches. Uh, they're they're different talents. They're they're both premier talents in my mind. It's impossible for me to say one is better than the other. Well, they run the ball a little more this game, considering Rodgers is beat up. Donnie, I touched on that in my preview piece. I think they're going to try to. They're not going to be able to use a lot of the stretch stuff they like to do, um, which I think could have been effective against this team. But with the way they're going to be set up, Rodgers running out of the pistol and the shotgun so much, yeah, they're going to have to run, or at least try to run, along the interior, and I don't see them having much success there. Now, you know, people always say, well, McCarthy's got to stick with the running game, and he did that against the Bears. He kept running Jamal Williams into a brick wall until the score got out of hand. But, you know, I think they'll try. I just don't see the guys along the interior of the Packers' offensive line having much success against the interior of the Vikings. They're too stout. They're too well equipped to handle that kind of run, run action. Diggs' routes are pretty. Matt, I agree. Uh, let's see. Are we going to see Ty used more this game? Five total touches last game wasn't enough. Well, it should have been six. One was called back. Don't forget, and that was a big gain. Um, I think they... They will try to get him involved a little bit more out of the backfield. I was actually surprised he was used as much as he was. Um, I think a big part of that was because the score got out of hand so quick, uh, so quick by the end of you know, the first half, it's 20 nothing. you've got to go into a mode where you're going to spread it out. They want to get to the quick hitting passing game, and that favors Ty Montgomery. They've done that all summer long. He's been their guy when they go no huddle, when they go two minute. Ty Montgomery's been the back. So... If maybe they want to jumpstart the offense at some point, I could see Ty getting a little bit more involved. But I tend to think we're going to see more Jamal Williams than we are Ty Montgomery. Uh, I think they value his pass protection uh, you know, way more than anything else, and uh, that's going to come to you know the detriment of Ty's playing time. Shane Ray is a beast speed rusher. I agree. He, uh, he has his moments, but I don't see the Packers giving up a draft pick for him. That's just not something I see them doing. Can we expect some special guests on transplants or the daily chat? I don't know, John. It's possible. It's possible. We may have a surprise or two that we're working on for you. Uh, I don't think we'll have, well, maybe we'll have. If there's some Packers luminary coming through New York, maybe we'd have them on here in Packers Daily. Uh, but on transplants, you never know. Just keep your eyes peeled. Does Allison have a big game? Good question, Samantha. I think. It's funny because I tend to think Zimmer's going to feel secure in leaving Xavier Rhodes soloed up on Devontae Adams. Um, you know, if you're going off last week's tape, they had their rookie, Mike Hughes, the kid from Florida that they picked in the first round. They had him uh, running mostly in the slot. So you've got to think he's going to be seeing a lot of Cobb, which means Trey Waynes is going to be on the other side against Allison. And, and that's a matchup that Allison should win. That's a matchup Allison could be really productive with. Now... The biggest issue for the passing game, for Allison and all the other guys, I tend to think the Vikings are going to run a lot of what they call too high safety, whether it's two man or cover two. They're going to have two guys back there. They're essentially going to be helping uh, a lot of the time on those outside perimeter receivers, including Allison. And it's going to be up to him to be able to shake uh, whoever's underneath and or get sit down in those holes in the zone and see it like Rodgers, which is something he does very well. Um, but if there's a place they're going to roll coverage, it's probably going to be towards Adams, which would lead one to believe that Allison should see some you know, one-on-one opportunities, much like we saw against the Bears on Sunday night when he had the long touchdown pass. Um, that was a perfect example of coverage being shaded away from him, and he's got a solo off the right sideline, Rodgers finds him for a big touchdown. You know, I'm not so, you know, saying it's going to be that dramatic, but I do think he's going to have opportunities to be productive. No doubt about it. Would Harrison Smith cover Graham? I think that's a good, good possibility. Um, when you look at how I don't think they want, uh, who's the other kid? The name escapes me. I mean, I think you don't want, there's always a possibility they put a corner on him too if he's split out, um, if he's in the slot or on the perimeter. But if they want to go single high, I think Smith is an option. I think you'll see less of that, though, because I think they, they'll want to sit in that too high look unless they get to that third down and long where they like to bring pressure, and then Smith's coming after Rodgers. But, um, 
Yeah, it's a possibility. I think they would use it more as a kind of a change up than a, you know, kind of the main game plan, so to speak. Does Graham or Cobb have more success over the middle this week? Dustin, I'm going to say uh, Cobb. I think you're going to see a continuation of what we saw in week one. Um, he had 10 targets last week. I believe he caught nine of them. Uh, that's a really good day at the office. I think we're only going to see more of that. Um, I've tried to tell people all summer long, you know, uh, Cobb is going to be the security blanket, so to speak. He's a guy who knows the offense better than anybody. He knows how to get open. He has Rodgers trust. Rodgers looks for him. I think you're going to see a continuation of that on Sunday against the Vikings. Sandejo, that's who I was trying to think of. Thank you, Kyle. Packers need to exploit Sandejo whenever he's in coverage. He's a liability. Absolutely. We saw that in the playoffs. Um, the, both the Saints and the Eagles in that playoff run took advantage of him. Uh, yeah, it's funny, too, because I think the 49ers tried to. They just missed on some throws. Um, but he is a guy who definitely can be taken advantage of. Now, you know, the issue is, like I was saying before, when they've got that too high look, I think they're going to stay in that a lot of the time. So he's not going to be singled up on anyone. But uh, when they do have those opportunities, they've got to take advantage. Because I agree, that is a spot where uh, they can make some hay. Do you think Cousins throws at least one interception, Samantha? I do, actually. Uh, I think he can still get confused a little bit. Um, I do think, I don't think he gets rattled, but I do think he gets, you know, he sees flashes of color, et cetera, and he gets a little confused in coverages. And history suggests that that's when he does throw the interceptions. He's had issues on the road before. Um, so we'll see. I mean, they've definitely got the talent there to take advantage of any errant throws he may have. Back with Lockdown Griffin, right? Matt, I tend to think so. I mean, he has. I think Griffin got home once last year on Bakhtiari, or maybe it was two years ago. But uh, for the most part, Bakhtiari's done a really good job of shutting him down in Lambeau. And I think that's going to continue. Even though Griffin's been listed with a toe injury, um, he, all signs point to him playing on Sunday. But I do think Bakhtiari should be able to handle whatever he's got on offer. Do you see HaHa ever becoming the player he teased us to be when he made the Pro Bowl? No, I don't. Will we see more blitz packages from Petten this week? Uh, Tyler, I think you'll see more, but only because I don't think it's a conscious game planning thing. Uh, I think a lot of the reason we didn't see a lot of pressure packages against the Bears is because the Bears were living in second and third and short. And that's not a high percentage you know, blitz down. Uh, if you can get guys in the second and long, third and long, then you can start you know, dialing up some exotics. But the Bears again and again and again were, you know, gaining six, seven, eight, nine yards on first down. So now all of a sudden it's second and three or third and one, you're not sending in the house, you're not sending heavy pressure. Um, so yeah, I do think we'll see more, but only because I think they'll have a little bit more success on early downs. Um, I, you know, we saw a little, you know, we saw some of the pressure uh, calls as the game went on, but uh, some, uh, most of that I would say is, is due to down and distance, much more so than any kind of philosophical switch. You are going to set up a subscription on here. I don't know, Austin. You can always uh, contribute to our Patreon if you're dying to give us money. But at the moment, she said TV will remain free. Like Tenacious D back in the day. Well, though, now they make stuff for money. Does Mike Zimmer dare blitz Rodgers when he knows the ball is probably coming out quick? No. Uh, uh, AJ, no. I won't say no as a blanket statement, but I, for the most part, no. I think he'll rush for and play coverage. Um, he knows Rodgers can't run around. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, uh, blitzing and not getting home and having Rodgers kill him. You can just play coverage. And, you know, he's going to test that offensive line. They had their issues early on in that game against the Bears. Um, they've got a really, really talented defensive front. They're going to get after it. And they're just going to rush forward. They're going to play coverage. And they're going to make the Packers, knowing that they are going to get the ball out of Rodgers' hands quickly and try and do that quick passing game, they're going to say, okay, fine, you do that. But we're going to make you do it. And that's why I keep saying I think you're going to see a lot of too high safety. They're going to make you do it all the way down the field. They're going to kick off. They're going to give you those, you know, 75, 80 yards. And they're going to say, okay, you've got to execute 10, 11, 12 plays flawlessly to put up points. And if you can do that, then we'll live with it. But we're not going to allow you to, you know, do these quick hitting things that, you know, run up the score or, you know, make things easy for you. Uh, we're going to make you earn it. Every down in and down out. And I think they'll just sit back. They'll just sit back and let their talent uh, do the work. 
Uh, do you think the Bears' early success due to confusion with that weird stuff that they were doing, all line lining up as a wide receiver, etc.? I do think they kind of emptied the playbook a little bit there on that opening drive. Um, you know, and I did touch on that in my preview piece. Um, the, you know, the Vikings' new offensive coordinator came from Philadelphia, where they ran a lot of RPOs, um, a lot of the spread stuff, some of the college stuff that's been kind of sweeping the NFL lately. And I wouldn't be surprised if he looked at what the Bears did early on in that game and, you know, threw in some misdirection, threw in some weird personnel packages and tried to kind of take advantage of the Packers that way and test them a little bit, really, to see how they do as, as far as their communication, um, their assignments, how they combat it. I don't think uh, we've seen the last of that type of thing uh, until the Packers show that it's not going to fluster them and it's not going to lead to anything. All right, everybody, I'm going to have to jump. Thank you so much for all the questions. I'm sorry if I couldn't get to yours. Um, like I said, make sure you're checking Cheesehead TV for all the latest. Uh, my preview and prediction post just went up. Pack a Day podcast is up. Lots of other Packers Periscope is up. So check it all out. Tons of great stuff. And check out Packer Transplants if you haven't. It's up at the YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. Um, Corey Remote from Green Bay. Always fun. Thanks a lot, everyone. I won't be on tomorrow, but I'll be back Sunday after the game. Thanks a lot.